Hi, my name is Rich and welcome to the Rich Tech Guy channel. And in this video, I am coming to you from Cisco Live 2023. So I am here in Las Vegas for Cisco Live, and I just checked into my room, and uh, it's kind of a crazy setup here. So I'm just going to kind of show around a little here. This is uh, the bathroom. <laughs> and uh, let's move on. Let's have a look here. We've got uh, something over here. This is all lay strewn about. We got a wine bottle that's uh, not quite finished. And uh, yeah, a half drink Coke bottle. Looks like an apple and a tangerine here. A shopping bag. So yeah, kind of crazy. So housekeeping is coming to take a look at the place. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. All right, so I did realize that I didn't really record an update to the hotel situation from when I checked in. So this is me later adding some additional uh, content here. Basically, housekeeping after about waiting, waiting for like an hour, housekeeping did show up. And uh, uh, the lady that, that came there, she, uh, she actually said she was told that she was coming to clean for an overstate, meaning that I was already there, that I'd been in the room, and that they, that they just didn't come and clean it, and I just asked for it to be cleaned, as opposed to what really happened was I checked in. But uh, of course, she saw me with the, the suitcase and, and everything, and, and like I had just arrived. And, and so she said, did you check in? And I, I was like, yeah, I, I did. And, and she's looking around the room. She's like, there is no way that this room should have been cleared for a new guest. Uh, so she uh, basically said, you know, the best thing to do really would be to go back down to the uh, front desk and uh, ask for a new room. And, and she even kind of said, you know, I uh, just want to let you know, make a, like, don't make too big of a, a stink about it, but make a little bit of one. And, and so I'd taken the video, I'd taken pictures of it. So I went down to the front desk and uh, I explained the situation. I was showing him the pictures of the room on my phone. And uh, yeah, he, uh, he kind of went back and talked to his manager and, and then came back out and, and said, okay, we'll, we'll move you to a new room. Uh, we'll get you set up with that. We are so sorry about this. This really shouldn't have happened. And, uh, and then in addition to moving me to the new room, they gave me a food and beverage credit, which was effectively like um, comping my breakfast for the next day. So uh, I got a free breakfast out of it, but uh, did kind of it was it was kind of a non not so great start to the trip and, and just sort of, you know, I wanted to get in. I, it was late. It was 10 p.m. when I checked in. So it was 11 p.m. by the time I, I'm sorting this out with the front desk and and just really uh, you know, not, not the way you want to start things out, but you know, that got resolved. Um, and, uh, the, the hotel, they, they did take care of me. So, uh, at least there is that.
so we have here the 2023 Cisco Live backpack. Uh, you know, every year they give out a backpack, and uh, some years I think they actually put out a pretty good one. Last year I think was a, was actually a decent backpack. Uh, some years it's so-so, and uh, some years I, I kind of view it as a miss. And my own opinion, I view this year as being a miss. So why do I think that? Well, first of all, it's the design of the backpack is you've got the uh, the flap here that comes over and clips in to uh, this little clip right here, right? So my issue with this design of backpacks, and uh, close up these zippers here. So the issue I have with these this design of backpack is it's not very secure. And the reason I say that is because even when closed up, Okay, somebody can reach in and uh, and work on it, or it's not. It doesn't take that much to just simply undo that and uh, get access. You know, when it's you're walking around with it on your back. So I don't think that is very secure design. That's particularly why I don't like this style of backpack. And then, of course, as I said, there's these zippers here, which. When you open them up, that kind of gives you greater access. There's a little pouch on this side for storing things like cables. There is a laptop pouch on the front or, or in, inside of it. And then in front of that, there is a secondary pouch for, say, something like a tablet. Um, the front of it is just a pocket for you know, pens. Uh, you, know, you can throw in other, various other things, business cards maybe. Uh, never quite got the idea behind these things. And then on the back, there's another pocket that I never quite figured out what its purpose is for because there's already a laptop and tablet pocket in the back, but there's this pocket on the side here that looks like it's also for fitting a laptop. So unless it's maybe just for personal preference, but I just, like I said, I didn't quite understand what the purpose of that. And then there's another pocket here on the uh, the strap here for storing something small, and a strap here for uh, attaching it to luggage, say going through an airport. Uh, as I said, overall, I'm not all that impressed with this year's backpack. But uh, you know, as I said, that's just my own opinion. Now, a major project that I was involved in at Cisco Live involved the FlexPod. And uh, the company I work for was involved in supporting the demo trade show FlexPod program that NetApp uses for whenever they need a FlexPod at an event like Cisco Live. And for this one, I was involved in making sure the uh, UCS X series and all the Cisco configurations were, were good and everything was working right and uh, prior to shipping it out. And then I flew in a day early and helped out with the uh, actual setup at the NetApp booth. So we got that out and unfortunately everything went pretty smooth for the setup. And uh, here at the end, we got ourselves a nice uh, working, beautiful uh, flex pod. So really a uh, fun experience. Uh, glad I was able to be a part of that and help out and put together this nice, uh, pretty flex pod that anybody who attended Cisco Live was able to come and check out. There is a lot going on at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas during Cisco Live. And what I mean by that is everything is trying to get your attention. And, you know, this is actually just kind of common with Vegas, but even so on a microcosm scale at Cisco Live. You've got your sessions, you've got the world of solutions, you've got everything going on in the world of solutions, uh, you've got, of course, the keynote addresses. So I'm going to break this down and we'll go through some certain areas that uh, I just want to highlight from the week at Cisco Live. The big announcements were, of course, at the keynote address. And this year, Cisco was heavy on the security announcements at Cisco Live. The big statement for security was, we securely connect everything to make anything possible. 
G2 Patel, an executive VP at Cisco, gave an excellent comparison to a symphony where if every musician plays a piece on their own, the end result is terrible when they play together. But when they coordinate their play, the result uh, is a beautiful symphony greater than the sum of its parts. He then followed that up by comparing it to security, where most organizations today have a patchwork of different security solutions from different vendors. Using that analogy, he referenced how many security solutions in place today are not synchronized, and that Cisco is working to create a platform for that synchronization through the Cisco Security Cloud. The Cisco Security Cloud platform focuses on four key areas, user protection, cloud protection, application protection, and breach protection. User protection is delivered by Cisco Secure Access, which will take away the need for users to determine how they need how they are going to establish a secure connection. And with Secure Access, they can just connect and get to work. Cisco Secure Access will also be completely integrated with Thousand Eyes in order to enable security teams to identify any slowdowns, bottlenecks, or outages across the greater network. For cloud protection, Cisco announced the launch of Cisco Multi-Cloud Defense, enabling security teams to manage security across multiple cloud environments with a single policy and from a single platform. Basically, they will apply the policy in Cisco Multi-Cloud Defense, and uh, it will translate it out to the various cloud platforms, be it AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. When it came to application protection, Cisco covered that through a hardware announcement, and that was around the Cisco Secure 4200 series of firewall, which will utilize artificial intelligence and machine learning to block malicious encrypted traffic without the need for decrypting it. It will also utilize zero trust network access for threat inspection at the application level. The AI powered interface will enable policy to be set based on natural language in order to simplify configuration. And the 4200 series firewall will be available come September of 2023. And when discussing breach protection, it's important to understand that 80% of breaches start from email. You click on that link and you're taken to a malicious website where malware gets downloaded onto device and now is operating on your network. All of this is traversing solutions from multiple vendors and you need telemetry across all of that. So a few weeks ago, Cisco was at the RSA conference where they made an announcement about Cisco XDR, a tool for security operations teams to see the threat landscape that your infrastructure is facing and respond with greater speed, efficiency, and confidence. And adding on to that solution, Cisco announced an AI-powered SOC assistant to further enhance your threat landscape observability, breach detection, and resolution. Overall, the end goal of every security team really should be to frustrate the attackers and not the users. And that really seemed to be the goal of what they were pushing uh, primarily at the keynote address. Of course, when it comes to Cisco Live, if you have a full conference pass, the main reason that you're there to attend is for the breakout sessions. And that is actually where I spent the bulk of my time at Cisco Live, the majority of which are for a deeper dive into either current technology or new announcements at Cisco Live. But there's one session that I really look forward to every year, and that is the CCIE NetVet reception with Cisco CEO, Chuck so Robbins. I just got out of the, uh, the NetVet CCIE session with uh, Chuck Robbins and the executive leadership team. Pretty good session. Uh, this time it was rather different. Uh, Chuck Robbins, uh, last year he, he talked a lot, but uh, this year it really, it was more the executive leadership team show. Uh, I did ask a question uh, regarding some issues going on where I work, but uh, that was, uh, got some good answers and my question was deferred to uh, the CX. Uh, part of the executive leadership team and uh, so it was uh, actually managed to to get with him and, and talk with him after it was over and, and add some additional stuff there so definitely a really good session and and I really do enjoy doing these last year the question I presented uh, we were actually able to use that and get feedback uh, or get in touch with Cisco and the right people at Cisco to help resolve an issue we were having so this is obviously a great session that I love doing every year at Cisco Live where uh, I get the opportunity to ask uh, Chuck Robbins and the executive leadership team a, a question and, and help to resolve an issue that we are actually having within our business.
Every year at Cisco Live, if you're not attending a keynote or are not in a breakout session, you're either eating or at the World of Solutions. This year, it felt like the World of Solutions was getting back to how it was in 2019 and earlier. And the reason I say that is because last year, there were a lot of notable vendors either missing or had a reduced presence in the World of Solutions. Now, just to highlight some of the things that stood out to me this year. Cisco was highlighting their partnership with the NFL, and so you were able to take a picture with the Vince Lombardi trophy. If you're not a fan of American football, that would be the trophy that the championship team earns every year. And then in the Cisco learning area, they had an autonomous Indy racing car. At the time of this video, it is the fastest fully autonomous racing car in the world. I had an opportunity to see it back in action uh, back in November. And the fun thing that they were showing with this car was there was also a simulator where you could simulate racing the autonomous car. And whoever posted the fastest time won a free one-year subscription to Cisco's new learning platform, Cisco U. Uh, Back this year was the Cisco response vehicle for providing data services in a disaster area. I showcased this uh, in my Cisco Live 2022 video, so uh, you can go watch that and, and check that out. And uh, NetApp, of course, had the FlexPod, which I already mentioned in this video. But they also had another racing simulator because Las Vegas is hosting the Grand Prix in November for Formula One. And uh, by the way, there's a lot of road construction all over Vegas because of that. So NetApp had a racing simulator for the uh, upcoming uh, NetApp or Las Vegas uh, Formula One Grand Prix course. And, uh, of course, let's not forget Veeam, who brought a dancing robot. I mean, how can you go wrong with a dancing robot? And back in the Cisco booth, as with every year, they fully display the infrastructure that is supporting the internet connectivity for Cisco Live attendees. They also have a network operations center showcasing the data being processed. And in addition to that, they have a security operations center to show the monitoring that they are conducting for the threat landscape. Also in the Cisco booth, there were these wonder walls, which were demonstrating how Cisco solutions can be utilized from beginning to end to ensure connectivity to the world. They had three of these wonder walls, which were uh, a very uh, unique and interesting way that I thought for uh, things like IoT or service provider as just a way to showcase uh, how the products work together to deliver an an end-to-end solution. All right, so I'm here at the uh, Cisco Live Customer Appreciation Night, the celebration. Uh, inside, it's going to be Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani. Uh, but out here, look at that view of Vegas. There we go. That's Vegas. Yeah. All right. And of course, at Cisco Live, there's always the customer appreciation event that happens Wednesday night. It's the concert. Now, because I was having dinner with uh, one of my customers, I got there a little bit late. uh, And so I missed out on the hat this year. But from what I saw from the hats is it was a rehash of a previous year's design. So I wasn't too upset about missing out on this year's hat. Uh, This year, of course, it was Gwen Stefani and uh, Blake Shelton, so uh, husband and wife duo there. And uh, as somebody who grew up in the 90s and listened to No Doubt's music, I was really happy to see Gwen Stefani. Uh, She went through all of her No Doubt songs. She played some of her songs from her solo career after No Doubt. Uh, That was a great time. Now, I personally, not really a big fan of uh, country music and therefore not much of a fan of Blake Shelton. So I didn't really stick around much for his part of the concert, but uh, I did see, of course, there were a lot of people who did enjoy it. So uh, if uh, you enjoyed either of those concerts uh, or if you're a fan of either of those, uh, yeah, go ahead. Let me know in the comments down below. Closing out the, the last days of the last day, really, of Cisco Live, and uh, uh, it's a good event. A lot of good announcements here. A lot of big updates in the security space, and uh, now I'm just kind of walking through the, the floor of the world of solutions. There's some big things to highlight here. Uh, the Cisco XDR, which they actually announced a few weeks ago at the RSA conference. 
Uh, they announced new firewall. So a lot of good uh, security stuff. And, and uh, you know, I kind of feel like Cisco of recent years is in a few areas of security, you know, particularly in firewalls, they've, they've kind of been dropping the game or dropping the ball. So it's good to know that Cisco Live is uh, here at Cisco Live that they are recognizing that. In fact, when I had my session with Chuck Robbins uh, on Tuesday, there's a guy that stood up and talked about how they lost a massive, massive firewall opportunity uh, to one of Cisco's competitors. Uh, Chuck was certainly not happy about that. G2 was certainly not happy about that. Uh, but they they stood up there. They they owned up to it and they accepted it. And uh, you know, G2 is I, mean, I was surprised he actually gave out his his own, his cell phone number to the guy in the room there. So you know, there's security is ubiquitous. I was taking security sessions here. That's something that I'd never done at Cisco Live yet uh, before. Uh, me being more of a data center guy, I was always more into the data center space. This year, I was taking security. So it's a uh, it's something that we absolutely need to keep in top of mind. It's not going away. It's only going to get bigger. And uh, uh, even so, and I'll explain in a future video also some of my reasons behind taking security sessions. And I'm going to start adding security content to this channel. So, hey, if you're a security guy, if you're a data center guy, and you're looking at security, uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button uh, right there. I mean, you're already on the channel watching this, but yeah, go ahead and do that. So, uh, and as I said, in a future video, I will explain a lot of my reasons behind that. There's, uh, there's actually a very big professional reason for it. Uh, but, Moving on, there's, there's also something else that I think I really wanted to address in, the, in these thoughts here about Cisco Live, and that is there is so much going on here at Cisco Live that you uh, can easily get overwhelmed. Now, in my case, uh, every year when I come to Cisco Live, I tend to have a plan in place uh, for what it is that I am looking to get out of the conference, what, what I'm what do I need to get out of this show? And I put together a plan in place for that. This year, it was a little bit different. There's some stuff going on in my uh, uh, professional world and then also uh, some stuff going on uh, just sort of in personal planning for, for things that I wasn't able to do that good of a job this year. And, uh, and then on top of that, adding um, some of this stuff about uh, doing this video, I really, uh, I kind of got flustered the first night with uh, the situation I had at the hotel and uh, some of the things I really detected was starting to unravel on me. So I had to, uh, to kind of pull that back together and get that plan in place. But if you're watching this, and, and obviously it's too late, too late for Cisco Live 2023, but maybe it's 2024 when you're watching this video or, or sometime later and you're watching this as a video for an upcoming Cisco Live session. You want to get an idea of what it's like at Cisco Live. Here, here's what I'm going to say. Get that plan in place. Figure out what it is you want to get out of the conference. All right. Once you've got that in place, uh, stick to that plan. There, there's a lot of stuff to distract you. Now, there's a lot of fun stuff. Let the fun stuff in. Enjoy the fun stuff. This is about a week of learning, improving, uh, growing on your, your Cisco knowledge, but also having fun. Okay. The concert last night, Gwen Stefani, Blake Shelton, that was a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun activities here. There's, uh, they're doing therapy dogs uh, you could go pet. Uh, they, uh, the stadium there with the uh, NFL solution, a lot of good stuff there uh, that you could play around with. So yes, by all means, have fun. And if you're watching this as an upcoming thing for coming to Cisco Live in the future, uh, Plan some time for the world of solutions. Don't just book everything in sessions, all right? Plan some world of solutions time. Now, that being said, a lot of these vendor booths, they are going to want your attention. They're gonna to wanna to scan your badge. And, um, so just, just know that's gonna happen. So 
but it's still it's great to check out it's great to check out what's going on in the cisco partner ecosystem what the the innovations that are going on out there are and uh you know and, and you know some of them are more gimmicky than others as far as bringing stuff in and you know like uh, veeam had their their dancing dog robot that was a a really fun thing to, to enjoy and, and really bring people into the booth. Now, once you're in the booth, okay, what are you gonna get out of that? All right, okay, so Veeam obviously does not do uh, uh, these uh, robotic dogs. Veeam is uh, into data backup systems and uh, ransomware recovery is really their big thing. So, absolutely just, like I said, make sure you have a plan in place when you come to Cisco Live. You know what you're going to get out of this event before you come in here and, and you execute to that. And then where time allows, when, as you're going about your plan for this event, wherever time allows, let the fun in. All right. And that is a wrap on Cisco Live 2023 Las Vegas. Did you get to attend? If so, go ahead and comment down below what your favorite part of the event was. And... Uh, Certainly every year as it draws to a close, I hope I get the opportunity to go the next year. So I'm hoping I'll be able to be back in Las Vegas in 2024 for Cisco Live again. Uh, I've been able to attend every year since 2014. So uh, hopefully, like I said, I'll get to keep that streak going. But uh, as always, keep learning, keep studying, keep improving, and I will see you in the next video.